All right, Technivorous here. We're going to be doing some modeling for 3D printing using sculpting in Blender 2.8 here. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to File, hit New File, and go to Sculpting. Now, this is going to bring up the Sculpting menu, uh, or, or excuse me, the Sculpting view. You have all your tool tips on the left here, and you're going to want to click on the tool icon here to bring up the settings for the brush itself. Uh, there are a couple things to look at here. The first of which is the symmetry option. The X symmetry is turned on by default. So if I hit one on my numpad and go to the front orthographic view, you can see whatever I sculpt on one side is transferred across the X axis to the other side and it will basically mirror that. Um, so the other thing you're gonna wanna do while you're looking at the tools is check out this little button here, this Dine Topo button. Now, um, I'm gonna click it and turn it on. You'll see it didn't say anything, nothing happened or anything. Um, if you were to start in normal mode and bring another mesh in here that you had kind of designed yourself that you wanted to scope, it would display a warning there and all you gotta do is click OK. Um, it just tells you that it's changing the topography of the mesh to something that's sculptable. But for now, we don't need to worry about that because this is the object that comes in the sculpting scene. Like I said, it's automatic. So, um, and I'll show you what Dine Topo does. So as I get close here, and I zoom in, it's adding to my model. Um, it's not distorting the mesh. And here, well, let me show you with it off. I'll turn Dine Topo off. I'm using the regular draw brush. And if I back out far enough, draw in the same spot long enough, you can see it's stretching those same vertices. So the squares are getting bigger. And because of that, you end up with some strange artifacts like these lines in here. The way to fix that is to use Dine Topo because instead of stretching those vertices, it adds in new ones. And you can see that it's triangulating right there. Now, the other thing is um, this right now is set to relative detail, which means the further out I zoom, the bigger my triangles become. Okay, and then when I zoom in, it gives me more detail. This is great for um, doing different levels of detail in a model. Um, so, uh, we are going to go ahead actually though and turn that to constant detail because we want it to stay the same. Uh, and, and you can see it set it constant when I zoom in. Uh, it uses whatever this resolution variable is here to fill it in. Um, so at 3 it's pretty blocky. I normally turn it up to about 25. We're going to do 15. Um, and you can see that that gives me quite a bit more control. The reason I'm doing 15 is because it won't slow me down as much during the editing process and I can always up the detail later. It's better to start out with less detail and then work your way up than the other way around. So right now I'm hitting the shift key um, because that smooths my model. Doesn't matter what brush you're using, if you hit shift it'll, it'll smooth it for you. And I just kind of want to add a couple more faces in some of these blockier parts before I smooth it out. Uh, I know this doesn't look like much now. We do have quite a bit of tools to go over to see what's going on here. So, so uh, let's get this little nubby smoothed out. And then we're going to just go out here. And I'm going to use the blob tool. The blob tool and the inflate tool are quite a bit alike. Um, they pretty much just create a bulge. The inflate tool tends to do it with a uh, somewhat more exaggerated look. But uh, I think we're working towards the right general direction here. Uh, okay, so I want to smooth some of this out because it's looking a little rough. There we go. And I'm 
the uh, tool I'm using right now adds quite a bit of detail as, as opposed to the draw tool. There is also the clay strips tool, which is exactly what it sounds like. It'll add a strip of clay. Um, or, alternately, you can hit the control key and take away a strip of clay. Uh, oh, I'm hitting the shift key. There you go. And you can see it just kind of take it into the negative there. And I'm going to do that here on the bottom of my model. And then we'll do a little smoothing. And, whoops. Go ahead and add him in a little bit more severe of a jawline. So, uh, one of the other tools that is really good here is uh, the seam. Well, actually, we use we use the blob. Let's do deflate inflate. So we're gonna deflate now by using control. And it really does just what it says here. It creates a kind of the deflating creates a kind of inward bubble, um, and the inflating will create a kind of outer one. We're going to go ahead and increase to 18, get a little bit better resolution. Um, and now I'm going to get my crease. This is a pretty powerful tool for adding edging in to get uh, little details right. Uh, one of the other things we can do uh, is the grab tool. The grab tool is a little bit trickier, uh, but basically it will grab mesh and pull on it. Um, the reason I don't use this as often as just adding to it, because you can see it's automatically triangulating. It's not really using that dying topo and giving it the effect that I want. Uh, but it does work or certain things and then because of my dying topo I can obviously go back in and add to it a little more detail without having to worry about those stretches I just made I can kind of break those up a little bit which is nice um, we're gonna go ahead and do uh, we're gonna take this down a layer here Ooh, too strong. No, you know what? Let's do... Let's flatten it. Then we are going to get our crease back out. Put that right in here. Now I'm basically just showing you how to use the tools and then I'm going to print this for you and show you uh, how easy it is to get something that you modeled in, in Blender off of your printer. It is really actually very simple. I bet that we can do this and take that down a notch. interesting horn-like protrusions they're actually uh, looking a lot like ears right now and that's not what I'm going for so we're just gonna keep on keeping on here put a little raise on this side of the crease here Make it look like a horn right And again, this is a, a pretty quick model. Uh, a good model can take hours, even days, several sessions in order to uh, get the look and the feel that you want. Uh, but I don't have days for a tutorial, so we're going to uh, continue doing what we do, right? So, uh, it looks to me 
like he's smiling a bit I'm following a natural contour that I just saw in here and I'm, I'm kind of digging it so far I want his beak to be somewhat pointy and bird-like I want to make sure that his bottom jaw is completely enveloped by his upper I think we need some roughness over here And let's go ahead and give him an eye socket. So for this, we're going to do deflate again. Get a rest right in here. Now, the further I zoom out, the stronger this tool will get, but I don't want to zoom out too far, so uh, because then it starts deforming some of my other meshes. So sometimes the best thing to do is to hold it in one spot and click it several times. Depression we want kind of outline. We're going to subtract it. And then we're going to go in and we're going to add a little bit. And we're going to leave that little crease like thing there in the middle. We're going to put that back in just a second. So. Whoops, I grabbed pinch, not crease. I want crease. There we go. I was wondering why I wasn't doing what I wanted it to. Now, for a little bit better detail, we are going to kick it up to 25. I'm going to do a little smoothing here. So there we have our, our pretty funky little dragon's head. Now, uh, orienting this for 3D printing is going to be a little bit tricky uh, because it doesn't have a flat bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our last tool here. And that's going to be our bottom tool. And I want to get it exactly flat with the bottom. So what I do is I hit 7 to go to the top. And then hit uh, 8 on the numpad. Uh, 12 times because 6 is a quarter rotate or a quarter rotation so 12 is a half rotation so um, that's what we want
and we flatten it out pretty well. Now, there is a lot that I could do to this model to improve it, but this is going to be, it's supposed to be a short tutorial. It's getting a little bit long. So I've showed you what most of the brushes do. I've showed you how to use Dine Topo. The other thing I want to show you is when you're using Dine Topo, uh, turning on this accumulate here, which isn't necessarily always on, you want to make sure that it is on uh, because it will add to the mesh instead of deforming the mesh. So um, I think that this is pretty good so far. I do need to pop out the eyes a little bit. And we will go ahead and file, export, STL. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this to my 3D printer models folder as Dragonhead and hit export. Uh, I'm not going to show you me slicing this because it's going to be a simple slice. All you got to do is orient it so it's as flat as possible. And I will probably turn on some sort of support. Uh, probably tree support because there's uh, a couple of overhangs here. So uh, when I come back, I will show you the printed model. Okay, so I lied. Here I am again. Uh, as you can see, I have my model. I imported it and I scaled it up to a thousand percent and we have issues. Uh, it didn't save my last edits, uh, but that's not a big deal. So what I did was I went back into Blender and I simply hit the tab key uh, and that brings you to edit mode. And then when you tab back, it automatically saves your topology. So I did have to export the file again, uh, but this is what it puts out the second time. So I do have the proper thing. So just so you know, if you're getting an improper model or your model hasn't been sent with the last updates, um, you're going to want to hit tab and change it. All right, so here we have our model all printed out. Uh, it could use a little cleanup. It is pretty much straight off the printer. I did pull the support off the bottom, but uh, we can take a closer look at some of the detail here. And in fact, I think I can turn my light on. You can get a little, little bit better idea of what we're looking at. So, um, as you can see, it came out fairly nice. The bottom is a little rough. Needs a little extra work. Uh, that's because I did use tree support. Now, you're not printing uh, a flat-bottomed object. It would be relatively simple to just go in after you're done with the model with uh, with the sculpting back into the modeling and add a flat base support to this um, but uh, I, I wanted to say plastic it's also why I printed it so small um, but as you can see uh, my seam is there um, so a little bit of work I could have done on the slicer settings but this is really a blender tutorial and our model for the most part came out pretty nice uh, this is a 0.16 millimeter layer height you can see pretty much every contour that I put in there, uh, the little ridges on the nose line, uh, the little spikes on the eyebrow, and these big funky ear horn things here. So, uh, and then you got the eye in there, which which you, we uh, modeled out as well. So, this was just a quick uh, mock up of just whatever popped into my mind at the time. So, uh, it's really fun to play around with the sculpting tools and just kind of create a shape and, and go with the flow of whatever is, is created and you can get some really funky 3D prints that way that are really original so um, if you guys enjoyed this tutorial don't forget to hit the subscribe button uh, we got plenty more coming we're going to do some more in-depth ones I always start on a topic pretty simple and straightforward to get you working right away as far as the videos we've done with Blender so far we're going to have to go ahead and do that because um, we've pretty much covered the basics for 3D printing with Blender and now we need to fine tune everything so stay tuned like I said hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell you get notified when we post those videos that way you're on top of everything and right here with us so uh, thanks again guys and as always guys I am Technivorous thanks for watching this video don't forget to hit the like button you can subscribe right here by clicking on the icon and I put a couple videos up in the corner one of them is going to be my latest video my latest upload and the other one is going to be what YouTube recommends for you so Feel free to check those out. Don't forget to hit that bell for notifications down below, and we'll see you guys next time.